Hello everyone, welcome back to That Catholic Gamer 2 Plays. This is the police. Let's see what we got going on here today. Looming epidemic, the new flu. Money allocated for stadium reconstruction now missing. Oh, wow. It's just missing. It's like, winds up in hands of mayor or something like that would be fairly typical. Uh, homeless man wins $23 million lottery. Um, you know, these guys might want to look at this. I'm just saying, you know? Given the corruption here. Moser and Iron Rose did not didn't come back to work. Rumor has it they're packing for Tibet. Um, was that because I let the Tibetan monk in at that one point? I think it was. Okay, well, I suppose there are worse people who have could have quit. Okay, um, uh, well then, let's see here. The shift A, we're going to start with Grant again. Uh, I think at the end of the day, we will let uh, uh, process the paperwork. We'll get a couple of bucks, though, for that. Going to the catalog. So look at this. We've already bought all of that stuff, and then all of that stuff, and everything is in store. Um, coming soon. This will be available August 14th. Uh, let's go ahead and buy it now. Sure, why not? This song will be available on August 14th. That sounds great. But for right now, let's go ahead and see. Let's put on a bit of a Chopin here. And off we go. All right, City Hall, hire Asian cops. The businessman is coming tomorrow. We hope everything will be ready. Okay, request result for City Hall. You can now hire one more police officer. Cool, we'll come back to that in a second. Request result for City Hall. You know, you earn 10% more, 13, 20 per week. Excellent. Okay, we'll go to the affairs first. For the police station, um, let's go ahead and declare her dead. Um, let's just do it. Um, the labor market, let's see here. Wow, some fairly older folks for our detective force, but I think... We will want to, first off, let's go to personnel. The shift B tomorrow. Uh, the Asian businessman is coming. We have Subaki, Kachi, and Subaki, Kachi, and Ozaki. That should be enough for tomorrow. Uh, it's a labor market. We have detective slots. Who are we missing in terms of a slot? We have three detectives on each side. Who's a weaker detective force, though? Probably Shift B, actually. So let's go ahead and hire somebody for Shift B. Um, they're both very old, though. So I think we'll go with the... can hire them, but I'm a little concerned. Actually, you know what? Let's go ahead. Let's hire them. We may regret that later. But um, let's see. Now we have three police officer slots open. And so, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, um, nine, and nine. So, um, shift A needs, wow, Sir Cecil, let's go ahead and hire him for shift A. And then, we will grab one for shift A and shift B. Um, Hire him for shift B, and then maybe one more, Victor Butinsky. <laughs> wow. Let's go ahead and hire for shift A. And that should be good for now. Starting to get a little thunder outside. Uh, hopefully uh, it won't get picked up on the mic. Um, let's see here. Looks good. I think we're looking good. Um, we've already got uh, something going on. Port warehouse alarm has gone off. One of the port warehouses guard assigned. The site is not responding. Storekeeper says there's nothing unusual. Apparently, the guard is an old man who regularly drinks and even sleeps in the warehouse. The room where the alarm went off stores frozen fish. Uh, let's send uh, Officer Beard. I don't think we have to send the SWAT. Um, yeah, let's just go ahead and check it out. Could be a false alarm. Not sure why we would have to send the SWAT for that anyway. Sands need help and desire park. Some of Vargas' men armed with flamethrowers burned down a city parkway named in San's honor. There's definitely a job for the police. All right. Uh, Samadhi, go ahead and uh, take care of that situation. 
Any investigations going on? No open investigations, no active gangs, no archived cases. All right. All right, well, it's a quiet day so far for the most part. Doing pretty good, robbery report. Let's go ahead. False alarm. The alarm was triggered by a flock of birds, the guard was drunk, and in the company of a prostitute. Wow, so he was just going all the way on this whole goofing off thing. So, anyways, we go to the deputy, police academy, send employees to an informal outdoor party. Haven't really gotten any complaints or anything like that, so, um, not sure if we need, let's see, actually, let's go to deputy. Um, we can hire a snitch. Uh, no, we can't. I guess you can only have one snitch at any given time. All right. It's a rape in the ghetto. An elderly man while taking a nighttime walk around his dog spotted a man and a woman entering a dark alley, then heard the woman cry out, help, he's trying to rape me. Uh, let's see here. We're going to send Strong. Let's we'll send Birch Jr. Um, and Robbins. Beard and Samadhi are back. From there, it's a pretty quiet day so far. Oh, there's a theft at St. John's Hospital. All right, so here's a... Another uh, case to work on. All the painkillers at the hospital pharmacy disappeared shortly after the building lost electricity. Pharmacy doors show no sign of forced entry. Okay. So we're going to put Beasley on the lead. Uh, no, actually, I think Beasley was on the last one. Let's send Turner and Soap. And uh, so Soap will be a part of that. And then maybe tomorrow we will put somebody else on the shift. Oop, and a robbery. Oh, my goodness. They're just coming up with all kinds of stuff. An unknown person or persons under cover of night broke into a pharmacy through a window and stole some expensive drugs. The money in the cash register was untouched. We're going to send Beasley onto the scene. And then in the suburbs, an elderly woman... It's a carjacking. An elderly woman who is shutting her windows for the night knows two teenagers across the street break the window of a car and get inside. All right. Well, Trevor hasn't done anything today, so we're going to send him out along with uh, Birch. Birch, yeah. Good stuff. A wounded man is lying unconscious beside a, woman in t beside a woman in a torn dress. The woman is in a state of shock and is hiding something behind her back. Pointing at the woman in order to raise her hands. Uh, don't you worry, you're not in trouble. We have a witness. That sounds good. <gasps> Offender escaped. Officer dead. Birch Jr. died. Whoa. Whoa. Okay, well, I screwed that up completely. Said two dead officers. Uh, let's go to affairs and uh, put somebody else on the market. Or oh, we can't do that yet. We'll have to do that tomorrow, or potentially after we process the paperwork. Well, that stinks. Uh, but you know, I'm not nearly as broken up about it as when I lost uh, Grant. Um, hate to say it, but it's true. Anyways, uh, Simona Rodriguez, pharmacist. I went for lunch at one o'clock, and a couple of minutes later, the lights went out. I shut the door behind me. I remember that I bumped into the janitor's cart that was standing in the hallway. I suspect the student Aaron Jones. He came by the hospital several times in a state of confusion with red searing eyes, dragging his huge backpack behind him, but it never occurred to me they may be an addict. Aaron Jones, I was in the bathroom when the lights went out. The only thing I saw was you normally see when you're sitting on the toilet. Oh, then the janitor came into the restroom with his cart. I heard him emptying the bin, then the lights came on, and I went to head physician's office for a signature, but he wasn't there. Yes, I have keys to the pharmacy. I wash the floors just like everywhere else, but I don't have access to the electrical panel. I should really be reading off the names. Laszlo Bodnar, the janitor. Uh, only my superiors have those keys, and there's another mystery. What happened to my garbage bag? Someone took them out of my truck, and I can't find them anywhere. The surveillance camera says the last frame before the film cuts out shows a janitor going down the corridor, his cart standing near the door to the hospital pharmacy. Okay, well, the janitor was the last one there, so we'll have to see uh, what happens there. Okay. Municipal assignment today. Freeburg will host a concert by pop singer Gennaro Crespo. We promised the concert organizers that we help with security. Please send your best people. Uh, okay, well, we're gonna have to send, uh, three good officers, unfortunately. The robbery investigation has started. All right, James Duff's the pharmacist. The night before last, everything was fine when I left. I closed up the pharmacy just like usual and went home. It was a little past nine at half past nine. I was at the bus stop. That, that I'm sure of. In the morning, I went to work like usual. As soon as I saw the broken window, I called the police. Uh, Smeed Robbie, homeless. Yeah, hang around at night near the pharmacy, but I don't remember much. One guy said to drink to my health. They threw a $50 bill in my hat. I had a little celebration. After I ran right into the store, all, that's, but that's all I can remember. I woke up this morning, the cops were all over. I can't remember the man's face, so I was more interested in the $50. 
All I can recall is the light, is the light struck something under his jacket. Something like a doctor's clothes. Hmm. Carrie Duff, pharmacist's wife. James came home a couple hours later than regular, but that's not so unusual. The insurance refused to pay for the treatment he needs, so now we're always short on money, and he's always trying to find part-time work. Not that anything ever pans out. He's willing to take on even the most difficult and dangerous work. Yesterday, for example, when he changed his clothes, stones and debris fell out. Started to really worry about the hellish jobs he's getting himself into. That sounds a bit rough. Um, and potentially criminal. Slovenko... Mavzer, pharmacy owner. Those dang bums who are always begging near my pharmacy are up to no good, obviously. One of them thought he'd be daring to take me for all I'm worth. Look at the guy. He's barely keeping on his feet. Where do you get money for all that alcohol? I've never seen anyone throw him a dime. Mrs. Felicia Ding, experienced pharmacist. Medicine they stole is Deprezi caps. It's very expensive, but there's not a lot of street interest, so I doubt it sell on the black market. I don't think it was stolen for resale. Sounds like the pharmacist might have been the one who actually did it and is trying to get the insurance. Carjacking, offender caught, officers unharmed, good stuff. Oh, Birch Jr. died. Now I am starting to feel a little bit bad about that. I'm going to have some more cops come on to the uh, force. Let's see. The Sands need help at the Octopus Restaurant. Engagement party turned into a bomb crisis when our guests discovered powerful explosive right under the banquet table. Our experts are already defusible. We nice the police reassured our frightened guests and confirmed that the situation is under control. Robbins, go ahead and take care of that. So we're a little tight for people, but we've got a three-man force, so that's pretty good. And we can send the squat and paddy wagon as support if necessary. Um, let's see, though. It's been kind of a tough day, though. All around. Assault at the, veg at the vegetable shop. Two women and a man were seen attacking a black couple, smacking them around with boots, no less. A local shopkeeper warned that when he was calling the police, at which time the man ran away, but the two women continued the strange assault. Trebor? Strong and Birch, go ahead and make me proud. We might end up missing a uh, event. Robbins is going to come back soon. Put that down to make sure that we get no but no uh, other failures for today, because that was uh, just rough. Assault report. Offender caught, officers unharmed, civilians unharmed, good stuff. Birch has got to be broken up about Birch Jr. dying. You know, that's got to be rough. So if he asks for the day off or the next couple of days off, I'm just going to give it to him. Robbery report. Got some frames. Okay. Uh, first and foremost, uh, I mean, obviously we don't have enough, but we have to come in. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Uh... Ran right to the store, but that's all I remember. Okay. This is going to be interesting to kind of figure out. We don't have enough frames for either one. Uh, we'll see how that goes. And then the theft. We've got three more frames. A lot of investigations going on. We're going to have to assign some other detectives from Shift B to kind of figure out how to do that. So let's see. But again, we've only got three frames, so there's even not even really a point in figuring that out, um, to my knowledge. So we'll just wait. And my gaming mouse keeps disconnecting. I'm probably going to have to buy a new one soon. All right. So that's the end of the day. That was kind of rough. Uh, good news is that the sands are way ahead now. So maybe we can afford to not help the sands out uh, tomorrow. I know I keep saying that, but uh, it's probably be good. Uh, let's just declare him dead. Oops. All right, sorry about that. For some reason, uh, iTunes decided to fire back up. Um, we'll see. Hopefully, that won't affect me any longer. So we're going to go ahead and move on to day 22, August 5th on Monday. Okay, let's go ahead. Millionaire bum donates everything to church. Oh, that's a good guy for him. Janitor found dead after stampede at school disco. Although, now that I think about it, he may be covering up the fact that the uh, stadium funding disappeared. Gay club admitting minors. That's not cool. Anyways, moving on. Let's see, here we go. I'm too tired. Can I, I can hardly walk straight. Can I go home? No. You're an awful, awful officer. Podanga. Uh, okay, he's the new guy who came onto the force. 
He is a bit much. Kachi, you've just been awesome. You're promoted to uh, to have second bar. Good stuff. All right, we're going to go ahead and just put on some tune skis here. Temptation Blues. Do, 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 do. Paid snitch, okay. You paid your snitch his weekly fee of 500. Yep, hire Asian cops. Jack, keep up the good work and make sure your final days at Freeburg PD are much more comfortable. Excellent. Mafia is a share. Your sales are your share from the sale of the explosives. Uh, I'm gonna take everything. The snitch says, I'm pretty sure your staff is preparing a plot against you. That's not good. All right, well, uh, we'll have to deal with that. But first off, we're gonna go to personnel and see. Shift A is loaded for bear. Shift B is missing. Um, some new ones. So we'll hire for shift A. And then uh, that's pretty much it because really Percy's not really a cop. So basically we've got an even number of cops on both sides. Um, for the investigations, I'm going to go ahead and put uh, some other detectives on here. So. We're pretty loaded. Uh, do we have really that many? Uh, oops, nope. I'm going to go back to affairs real quick because I want to see. Okay, so we got four detectives on shift A and three detectives on shift B. Okay, that makes sense. All right, so we'll go to investigations. Um, get detectives. And then Beasley is at home. Uh, these guys are at home too. Okay, so what we really, what we want to do is I'm going to put... Uh, actually, interestingly enough, can I remove? Yes, I can. Okay, but I won't. But I'm going to put Molon from Shift A for that one. Actually, since we've already got two leads on there, I'm going to put Armstrong on that one. And then for the robbery here, we'll go ahead and put Newberry and just do that for now because I want to go back and just test to make sure that I can remove people if I need to. Excellent. Okay. So we'll put that on, I'll put the detectives, and then we're gonna put on DeBrito as well. Get as many people on, see if we can crack those cases sooner rather than later. And uh, let's see here, In consulting, send your staff for training. So somebody, so, some on the force are plotting against me. The destruction of property in the downtown, in the Chinatown dormitory. Student reported seeing a truck drive into the yard at the hostel. A fat man climbed in and began to slice up a bench with a chainsaw. Some of the students tried to intervene. Man threatened them with a chainsaw, saying, I ask you nicely to keep quiet at night. Now you can park your yellow behinds someplace else. All right, so we're going to go ahead and send uh, Kachi. This could get serious. So I can send Kachi, uh, Purdy, and uh, uh, Subaki and Austin are uh, partners. So let's send Griffith. Let's go ahead and send them out there. Do, 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 do. So far, looking like a nice peaceful day. All right, the situation is more serious than we thought. We're gonna have to get back up. All right, Austin, Subaki, go ahead and uh, back everybody else up. And uh, let's see, assault with a deadly we weapon at uh, Johnson, Jurgen, and Katz Law Firm. A call came in from the Secretary of Law Offices of Johnson, Jurgen, and Katz. She reports that a woman wearing an expensive fur coat and high heels entered the offices of the senior partners of the firm and asked the secretary not to disturb them shortly after shots rang out from the office. That's not cool. We're going to send Yancy, Ozaki, Fraser, uh, and J. Boogie. Uh, no, no. We can use the SWAT twice. Um, let's go ahead and do that. We'll use them once for this one. So I'm a little concerned. This could go south quickly. Especially after what happened to poor Birch Jr. yesterday. Cops show up at the scene. Destruction of property report. Offender caught. Officers unharmed. Excellent. Everybody comes back nice and alive. So you got going on here, sounds need help. Office is closed, but the sounds of men screaming, gunshots and breaking glass um, can be heard. Swipe the secretary key, shoot the lock. We're gonna shoot the lock. A bald man is in a suit laying in a pool of blood. A woman in a fur coat is standing on the table, taking aim at two other men who are hiding 
uh, behind an overturned bookcase. Drop your weapon now, pounce on the woman, shoot the table leg. Drop your weapon now. There you go, offender caught, officers unharmed, civilians unharmed, you handle it by the book, you get things done. The Sands need help in the suburbs. Some punks ransacked the house of the family member. Seems like they were looking for something. Something other than money. Maybe a notebook with a list of important contacts. Let's lock up these scumbags before they can do any real damage. Now, you handle your own dirty laundry today. I put enough of my guys uh, onto the force. Let's see. Here we go. Uh, Derek, uh, Sofa so Sophocles, Theater of Drama. I guess that's correct. Dear Mr. Boyd, the TV show I produced, Justice for All, suffered a terrible drop in ratings last month. Our poll suggests that our viewers stop finding the shows believable. We're currently shooting the next season, and for one episode we need a real cop who will portray a cop pervert who is kidnapping young girls and raping them in his car. We don't have a huge budget, but I think that we can afford a couple of thousand for you, and the cop will play a part of the show. And plus, everyone in the city will see him in the show. I got just a guy for you. I mean, whoops, didn't mean to bump the mic there. All right, let's see here. Bomb threat. Oh, that's not good. Uh, we'll definitely want to wait. Okay, SWAT has come back. Excellent. A man just came in from a bank branch to the center of the city. A man entered wired with explosives. He threatened to blow himself up along with everyone nearby unless he was allowed to speak with the president of the TV. man claims that the bank took away his house after failure to repay a loan, a loan which he says he's never took out. All right, we're going to have to do this um, by the book. I'm going to send Yancey, Purdy, um, Austin and Subaki, and we will send the SWAT. Bomb threat is no joke. Um, and the tip we got was actually from a bank employee. The dude certainly looks like he has a bomb, so we're going to take that very seriously. And, uh, boy, after today it was kind of quiet. Okay. Uh, bleep you, Boyd. Take your orders and shove them up your better half. I quit. Okay, well, that's his stuff. Thank you for your help, Mr. Boyd. And Percy uh, quit on his own accord. That's, you know, um, <laughs> uh, what can I tell you? Uh, all's well that ends well. <laughs> Bomb threat. Report. Offender caught. Officers unharmed. Civilians unharmed. Excellent, excellent, excellent. And uh, we have a slot, but I'm going to wait till the labor market uh, frees up a little bit because uh, there's only one officer left to hire, and he's not very good. Uh, go to affairs, police station. No, not police station. City hall. I got three days left before I can do that. I can also um, do some threats and whatnot. Uh, the Sands need help at the ports. Our family has several city officials on the payroll. One of them is ushering some valuable items. The goods are slated to ship tomorrow. Looks like there's some punks who wants to dump the cargo aboard for you and clears dock. Our man in the port says they bribed some guards. Too bad they weren't smart enough to bribe the police. Unfortunately, um, I did not hear this call come in because I was busy uh, taking care of some other police-related affairs. Um, really don't have anybody, though, doing nothing. I think we can send... Can we send... No, you know what? I'm going to keep our hands clean for this one for today. Oop, that thunder's getting a little closer. All right, destruction of property. Uh, Mrs. Sofa's furniture store. The store manager reports that a long-haired old man with a large knife broke in. He's ripping out the lining of our sofa, shouting, where's my money? Put this cook in a straight jacket. He's obviously sick. Anyways, come quick. We're hiding in the back. Uh, oof. All right. I'm going to send Subaki and uh, Austin. And uh, I'm do Purdy. Send that in. We'll ignore a couple of the Sands orders for today. We've been at their beck and call for so long that they can afford to take care of their own stuff for a little while. So that'll be that. And then uh, hopefully next time, we'll see. We've got a robbery report. Theft. Okay, well, we got a few more things that we can do with this. Uh, let's see here. Uh, it's past nine times. Left stuff. So I'm sure. In the morning, I went to work like usual. So I was broken window. I called the police. Uh... All right, so there's a doctor's clothes um, jacket. Uh, let's see here. Um, so we'll do that. And then the dude uh, drank himself. Let's see here. Put that on there. Then put that there. Nope, nope, nope. 
Whoa. Okay, we're going to have to wrap this up. Uh, I will come back and try to solve this case tomorrow. Uh, see if we can just clear the day, because that lightning is really starting to fire up out there. Destruction of property report. There's a, there really was a bundle of cash hidden under one of the sofas. Loot found money. Uh, we are going to ask the mafia to sell cash. I guess that means launder it. So I think what I'll do is I'll give it to the staff after they've laundered the cut. All right, that is it for the day. The Vargas didn't really gain much ground, did he, on that? But anyways, we're going to go ahead and cut it short. Percy has quit. Uh, all's well that ends well, and everything else went according to plan. So thank you very much for joining me. It's been that Catholic Gamer Dude playing. This is the police. Thank you very much, and I'll see you next time.